Today I stand to speak as your family pastor to struggling and hurting church. Already going through ups and downs in 2018. And I invite your reflection with me on this simple subject that I've entitled Cravings. Cravings. Just turn to your neighbor and tell them, I've got some cravings. Come on, turn to the person next to you. That's your neighbor and just tell them, I've, I've got some cravings. Cravings. Now, 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 turn to your other neighbor and tell them, don't worry, you've got some too. Not even a month into 2018, but many have suffered illnesses already. Southern Californians have suffered recent fires and mudslides, and we here at the Vallejo Drive Seventh-day Adventist Church this past week have suffered the tragic loss of our beloved sister Irma Torres. So in all this tragedy, I just stand to speak these words of comfort and ask you simply, have you ever read a scripture passage that sounds like your story, reads like your reality, tells like your trial, your test, your testimony, and maybe preaches like your very own paradoxical drama of light and darkness, triumph and defeat? In Psalm 27, verses 1 to 5, I see my life story hiding behind each verse. Can you see yourself in the, this passage this morning? Just look at the text, look at the text. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Uh, whom shall I be afraid? Aren't you glad you made the Lord your light, your salvation, and the strength of your life already. Go on and say amen to somebody. Say amen to somebody. Maybe I just borrow a couple of amens this time and I'll give it back to you the next time I preach, I promise. Don't, don't you feel like David somehow stole those words from off your lips? You see, this is my story. This is my song. I, I don't fear anybody or anything because the Lord is my light. But like David, I've got enemies that bring darkness into my life. So verse 2 goes on to say, when my wicked enemies come to devour me, I promise you they're going to stumble and fall. Though a host of warriors gather around to fight against me, and war rises up all around me, in this I will be confident in 2018. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. I told you this is my story, and this is my song. You see, I've got both ups and downs. I've got the Lord's light and salvation shining on me, but I've also got the gloom and doom of dismal darkness cast by my enemies enemies all around me. I've got some friends who will join me in the light of God's love. Oh, but I've got some enemies who come up against me and cause my darkness. You, Pastor Peter? Yes, little old me. I'm too big and bad and bold and bald to have no problems. I got some issues, man. I've got some situations that seem too dark and dismal and difficult for me to handle, but this text assures me that God will hide me in his pavilion. Oh, but don't you look down your noses at me like you just got the Lord as your light and all the time and you ain't got your own darkness. Just go on and, and tell the truth and shame the devil. You know you've got your own darkness here this morning. I, I know that's right because everybody lives with darkness sometimes nobody has immunity all of y'all everybody in here got your own darkness cast by the enemies in your life and we may sit up in church with our legs crossed and our arms folded and pretend we got it all going on but i just stopped by to burst your bubble and say simply nobody's living perfect all humanity suffers brokenness everybody got some issues everybody got some ups and some downs everybody 
everybody got some light and darkness, some friends and foes. Uh, some folks you don't like and some other folks do that don't like you just keep coming around and casting their shadow of darkness in your life. You sing that old song, tell me what's wrong with me now. Tell me why I never seem to make you happy. The heaven knows I tried. Don't you worry about that. That's old school. That's real old school. That's real that's stylish chicks. And that's, a, that's old school. Y'all don't know nothing about that. But this psalm represents the perfect parody of human life it details our drama with both light and darkness good and evil heaven and hell life and death it makes no difference who you may be the life cup of our humanity never gets filled up we all face these ups and downs in this new year 2018 yet because we trust god's light will dispel our enemy's darkness our best wisdom says we must press on uh, towards the light amidst the darkness and difficulty and adversity and sickness and death and trials don't give up don't quit just hold on and endure langston hughes that african-american poet said it this way well son i'll tell you Life for me ain't been no crystal stair. It's had uh, ups and downs. It's had tacks in it and splinters and boards torn up and places where there ain't no carpet on the floor bare. But all the time I've been climbing on and reaching landings and turning corners and sometimes going in the dark where there ain't been no light. So boy, don't you turn back now. Don't you sit back down on those steps because you find it's kind of hard. Don't you fall now. For I'm still going, honey. I'm still climbing. And life for me ain't been no crystal stair. But I think this psalmist has a far better answer than this poetic advice to press on, hold on, endure, and keep on going. David cries, I, I want, desire, and crave just one thing from God. I want to move into the temple and live in God's house for the rest of my life, and then everything will be all right. I just want to look at God's beauty for the rest of my life, for in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. When David speaks about his best way to handle enemies and trial, he speaks not of pressing on, enduring, and hanging in there. Instead, he speaks of moving into God's house. He says, I just want to move to the house of the Lord for the rest of my life and spend my days beholding his beauty. And when my enemies come up against me, my God shall hide me. He shall shelter me in his pavilion. Now, 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 as a pastor, I, I confess that I sometimes wish more of our members expressed this craving. Ain't I right, Pastor Mark, Pastor Luke, Pastor Shane? Don't you just wish all our church folk would express this longing, this desire? We just want to fill the house of God. We just want to fill the church house with folks saying, I just ask and have one craving, one thing, just one thing from the Lord that I desire, that I may dwell in God's house for the rest of my life. Sister Mavis, no more trouble getting folks to Sabbath school on time. They'll be living right here in God's house. That's right, standing on the promises while living on the premises. Mm -hmm. I can hear Brother Henry and Brother Bell asking how we going to handle the utilities and how we going to feed all the people. Don't you worry, God will provide. This church will be filled every single Sabbath with folks who came not just to hear the choir sing, not just to hear the organist play the pipes, not just to hear the bell choir chime sweet melodies, not to hear the preacher 
scripture articulate God's word in order just fellowship with the saints and say happy Sabbath not just to admire the splendor and the beauty of this temple evidence edifice no 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 everybody would just come to gaze upon God's beauty all the days of their life yes they packed up all their belongings and said we are gonna move to God's house over there at 300 Vallejo Drive Glendale California 91206 I hear them say I have this confidence that in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion okay don't you worry don't you worry I know everybody's staying for the potluck but after that we're gonna go on home amen amen but you see this desire, this craving shines gloriously as our answer to human troubles in this year, this new year of ups and downs. The safest place in the whole wide world must surely be God's house and God's presence in this year. All of us crave with David God's presence. The majestic glory of God calls us into his divine presence. The desire to be with God tugs the heartstrings of every Christian. The long Longing for God and humanity to be fully united ricochets throughout the corridors of earth's long history and the mission of our church to awaken in every human heart this love and longing and craving lives right here in this passage the hope of heaven the goal of glory the dream of divinity and the will of the worshiping believers and the worshiping saints of God lives right here we all possess this one craving to be with God and to behold his glory forever and ever and ever and we confidently trust that he will shield us in his pavilion and that's why this psalm sounds like your story reads like your reality and tells like your testimony almost like David's told these words from all off your lips because all of us have this one craving but you see in our culture we don't say it like David said it we just say I want to go to heaven and be with Jesus amen Isn't that what we say Isn't that how we say it yeah that's how we say it we say I just want to go to heaven and be where Jesus is in fact just about everybody has an obsession to go to heaven and in the time of trouble trouble preacher yeah trouble like temptation trouble and 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 financial trouble and irs tax man trouble and family fights trouble and marital trouble and trouble with in-laws and heart trouble and job related jealous work co-workers trouble and church politics trouble and sickness disease and even death trouble in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his heavenly pavilion for all of us trapped in the ups and downs of life in this new year living amidst the lord's light and our enemy's darkness caught in our own purgatorial limbo between heaven and hell stuck down here in this earthly plane of existence we have one craving and longing for our our heavenly home whereby we might escape our enemies we collectively share David's craving as our answer to life's problems we we want Jesus to take us to heaven so all our troubles will end we dream sing and pray about heaven because we crave God scholars say David wrote this psalm while he ran from Saul and he lived an entire lifetime longing to dwell in God with God in God's place and I pondered why didn't God ever grant David's wish and satisfy this craving and and longing to move to God's house thankfully I found the answer in the story of David's life indeed David possessed this craving for God's presence and he trusted God to shield him from his enemies but he had other cravings that overpowered this one craving if you review his life story you'll see he craved power wealth fine women and conquest in battle yes he craved God's presence but all he could do was write a psalm and sing this song with that craving he could not turn the craving into a reality why because the path to God's house requires much more than a longing a wish a craving for God's presence and a psalm like the African slaves down south used to sing everybody talking about heaven 
ain't going there. Hmm? Well, preacher, what does it take to get up into God's heaven? Well, when reviewing David's life story in light of this psalm, I realized he never got to move to God's house and live forever. Yes, he made the Lord his light and his salvation, but his enemies remained and he always had fights. I stayed up all night last night wrestling with the text to find out why God never ever gave David what he craved, residence in God's house and shelter from his enemies. God didn't even let him build the temple of God's house, let alone live in God's house forever because he had blood on his hands. In 1 Chronicles 28 verse 3, God says, you are not to build a house for my name because you've been a man of war and have shed blood. And inquiring minds like mine just had to know why, God, why, why? In Acts 13, 22, you called him a man after your own heart. Why didn't you satisfy his craving to move into your house? Why didn't you shelter him in his, from his enemies in your pavilion? I said, Lord, I want to know because God's people want to know. We long to go to heaven and dwell with you and be shielded from all our enemies uh, we, and of sickness and death and evil all around us so what's taking you so long for you to bring about this salvation oh I wrestled with the text all night long until finally it sat up and it smiled in my face and I heard God I heard God's spirit saying Peter uh, you need more than a salvation that brings you to heaven. You need more than a salvation that changes your location. You need a salvation that completely changes you. You need more than a light that shelters you from your enemies. You need a light that shelters you from you yourself. And moving into God's house and standing on the sea of glass and walking on the, the streets of gold and wearing a long white robe and hobnobbing with the holy angels and fellowshipping with the 24 elders and sitting at the banqueting table and sipping the heavenly champagne may be your wish and your burning desire and your deep craving but it's not the primary goal of the Christian and that's all I came to say this day it may be our longing and our fixation, obsession, and our craving, but it's not our primary goal. Yes, Jesus promised, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again to receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And almost every human being says, I want to go to heaven. And we think of heaven as a place of love and joy and peace. And we crave God's glorious heaven as the answer to all our our problems and the fix and the cure and the solution to all our ills and we believe God will make all wrongs right up in heaven but God's great goal right now is not so much getting us to heaven but instead it's getting heaven into us in fact getting into heaven won't make much difference for us if God does not first put heaven in us but why, brother preacher? Why, brother preacher? Because even now we dwell in God's presence, yet we struggle. David himself said it in Psalm 139, verses 7 and 9. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand find me. We cannot escape God's presence because we live in it. And so dwelling in God's heavenly abode may look like the answer. But I declare God craves something far more wonderful, far more powerful. Yes, we obsess about heaven and crave God's dwelling place. But God in Christ has already made his dwelling place with us and in us. Oh, this is the gospel. For this cause Jesus came and lived and bled and died. They hung him high and stretched him wide. He hung his head in the locks of his shoulders and there he cried, it is finished. Oh, but early Sunday morning, he got up from the grave. He put one foot on death and the other foot on the grave and he looked the devil in the eye and he said, I snuck into your house over the weekend and I got the keys 
to hell, death, and the grave. I've conquered every one of your enemies already for you. I've conquered death. I've conquered hell. I've conquered evil. I've conquered wickedness. I've conquered demonic forces. I've solved your problem with your external enemies. But now through the power of my spirit, I come to enter into your life and fix the problem with your internal enemies. And I've got power to change any life. And he comes into our lives to give us that new life. You see, our fixation on heaven might cause us sometimes to miss our real need. We don't need to dwell in God's presence. We need God's presence to dwell in us. David didn't just need God's shielding from enemies around him. He needed God to shelter him from the enemies within him. Those dominating cravings and addictions and fleshly affections, his enemies enemies of pride and self and ego and lust and deceit and inauthentic cover-ups and pretentiousness and lies and evil plots. Lord, I need you so much more than to be in your presence, to behold your beauty and be shielded from my enemies. Yes, that's wonderful. And I trust God will do that for me. But I'm so messed up right now that I need God's presence inside of me. I hear somebody here right now crying out, Lord, I need you. Fix me on the inside through your spirit's power. Heal my anger and my hurt and my pain and my brokenness. Lord, I need you. Oh, I'm thankful that the Lord is my light and my salvation. I fear no enemies without me because his light illuminates their darkness. But oh God, the apostle Paul declares in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 6, he says that the God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has now shined that light into our hearts. Oh Lord, I need you to shine that light of your love and glory not on my enemies, but on my dark heart. Oh Lord, I need you because the enemies are enemy. Illuminate the dark corridors of my heart where fear and doubt and pain and resentment and ego and pride reside. Light up and reveal my own enemies of selfishness and arrogance and malice and hatred and covetousness and lust and prejudice and racism. Be the light and the salvation that shows me the enemy in me and brings your healing love, oh God. Help me to know that while I crave to be in heaven, you create to create a bit of heaven in me. I've been in your presence, Lord, so long, but still I'm not changed. If I could get up into your glorious heaven where your residence is, your physical presence will be like a consuming fire upon me. Oh Lord, I need you. If you would just be in me and cleanse me and fix me, Lord, I need you. Come into my life through your Holy Spirit's power and fix me, Jesus. I believe that's the prayer and the cry of every transformed heart. And I just believe that that was the prayer and cry of Sister Irma. I believe she cried that cry. I didn't know her long, but I know she, I believe she cried that cry and prayed that prayer. And I believe God answered that prayer for her and lived in her heart. And her one desire, her craving would be today for all of us to pray that same prayer. Lord, I need you to draw me not so much into your presence, but put your presence into me. If that's your prayer this morning, I invite you to stand with me and join our praise team as we sing this song, Lord, I need you. Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here, I find my rest. Without you, I fall apart, you're the one that guides my heart. Lord, I need you, oh, I need you. 
Thank you, O oh God, that you've promised to come into our hearts, not just to dwell around us, but to dwell inside us, not just to fix our surroundings and secure our habitation, but to fix our insides and secure our hearts. And today, O oh God, we, as a wounded, broken congregation, feeling the hurt and the pain of the loss of our dear sister. We come to you. We come to you with an open heart, crying out, oh Lord, I need you. So I pray, oh God, right now that you'll fulfill that promise for each one standing here before us. Come into our hearts. Bring your peace, bring your power, bring your love your goodness, your grace, your glory, and your grandeur into our hearts so that our praise can be powerful and our worship will be wonderful. Because we live with a transformed heart, with a cleansed heart, with a renewed mind, with a strengthened resolve to live for you, to love you, to love every single person we come in contact with. May we be a blessing in our families, at our workplace, at our school, in this church, in this community. May everywhere we go, people encounter a fresh new look at Jesus. I pray now, Lord, that you will be with us. Be especially near and dear to the family of Sister Irma, her husband, her children, her sister, her father, be near and dear to them, O oh, oh Lord, comfort them. Give them your peace. Bless us now. May we go not from your presence, but just from this place until we come again to worship in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Be seated.